to challenges from oceans. And Dr. Zhang is joining us online. Please welcome Dr. Zhang with a big hand. You may start your presentation. Yes, we can uh, you that uh, very clearly. So, uh, yeah, could you begin the uh, your presentation? Yes, thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much, Mr. Chair Chairman. Okay, Good afternoon. It's my great honor to attend the Busan World Vision Forum 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all keenly aware that, on the one hand, we are facing these challenges from the oceans and climate change. On the other hand, the oceans are also facing pressure and uh, challenges from human activities and climate change. Both human and the oceans face many challenges. Therefore, cooperation is the only choice available to mankind. And the global ocean governance is the only way out. This is the theme of this forum and also this is our consensus. So there are two points which I want to share with you. First of all, we must address the challenges by identifying what they are. Therefore, first of all, we need to discern the common challenges we are facing. The Earth's environment is composed of multiple circles. Among them, the relationship Dr. Chang, are you on? I'm sorry. Yes. So, uh, I'm sorry for yes. intervening you at the presentation. I think that the slide is, is, the, is fixed, so please uh, the, uh, go to the slide, the next slide. Slide doesn't uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, among them, the relationship between climate change, oceans, and the human beings is closely linked. But now, they are hurt each other as a uh, versus circles. From the pers perspective of the relationship between ocean and climate change, ocean is at the gist of the Earth's climate change system. However, global climate change has caused by many negative impacts on the oceans, reducing its ability to re regulate climate change. And the ocean covered about 71% of the Earth's surface areas. The oceans have a tremendous capacity to absorb heat and uh, carbon dioxide from the space as an adjust of the Earth's climate system. Scientists told us that over the past half centuries, the oceans have absorbed more than 90% of climate system heat surface and more than 30% of the human emotion of carbon dioxide, directly slowing the rate of the global warming, but at least apparently now it was damaged. So, which greatly deduced the ability of the oceans to influence the climate change. Uh, Dr. Chang, are you on? I'm yes. sorry, I'm very, very sorry, sorry about that intervening to you. So, um, I think that the slide, uh, it does not seem to on your screen and then the screen that we are seeing. So. Yes, yes, this one. The yeah, second. the slide is that we are, we are noticing is that the first slide just only with uh, the topics and the, your affiliation and your names. So we could not to find out this on the slide. This, yeah, yes, right, this one, yeah. This is 1.1 1 .1 slide, so. Yes, this 1.1, 1 .1, yeah. Yes. I think that yeah, I did not yeah. put every word on my slide. I just put the main ideas and the main focus on it. Not every word I what I want to say I will put all on the screen. Okay? Just the the, the, the title. Uh, because the time is very tight, so I will move on. So from the perspective of the relationship between the ocean and the human beings. The ocean have made great contribution to human beings, but has been destroyed by human activities as well. And now the ocean responds to those unfriendly human activities with challenges that we are facing now. So from the, the, the perspective of the multi damage relationship between climate, oceans, and human beings, 
the, uh, among all of them, climate change causes global warming, and the global warming which causes the Arctic and Arctic ice sheet to melt, which also causes ocean acidification and the sea level rise. The ocean acidification leads to the damage of marine ecosystem, which leads to the damage to the change of marine life, especially fishery resources. Human being activities have a significant negative impacts on the ocean and the climate. So three of them now damage each other. They have the negative impacts on each other. That's the challenges, the main challenges we are facing now from my view. So both the climate and the ocean issues are beyond the understanding of a single discipline and beyond the ability of a single countries to deal with them alone. Countries must cooperate and take collective action to respond to challenges together. This is the way we are can to respond to the challenges from the ocean and from the climate change. And uh, the second point I want to share with you is China and Korea should strengthen maritime cooperation and jointly take an active part in global ocean governance. Uh, on the one hand, China and Korea has already established very friendly cooperation in the maritime field between government departments, universities, and research institutions as well. For example, uh, my institute, CIMA, has also had dialogues and exchanges with the KMI of Korea. We hold the meetings, meetings uh, in 2018. But uh, as we planned, we will meet every year, but these days due to the COVID-19, so we have, have to stop the exchange, we have to stop to the dialogue, but we hope we can to meet each other in near future. And also for another uh, example, uh, Professor Park Yong An, he is the member of CLCS and China also have member uh, Professor Lu Wenzheng as well also. Uh, both of them are working very closely and in the CLCS uh, we have very good cooperation as well. And also another good example is in the Antarctic area, I have visited the Sejong Scientific Research Station in Antarctic area of Korea, Sejong Station, and also China Scientific Research Station, Great War in Antarctic. Uh, they are both very closely neighbor and uh, scientists of the both station are also have very good cooperation and a very friendly relationship. So that's my view, yes. China, on the other hand, China and Korea share many common interests and concerns in the world oceans as well as in the Antarctic and Arctic regions. So I think uh, also, there have many international multi dialogues, exchanges, and negotiations. For example, uh, it's coming, will come in the CBD COP15, which will be held in Montreal, Canada, in November, the next month. And also, the negotiation of BBNG agreement, it will, is planning to be held in the January next year. Uh, both this uh, Korea and China in these two international negotiations, from my view, uh, Korea and China have shared many common concerns. And uh, so I think the government uh, delegations and experts uh, can have more communication, more discussion, and share each other position on the issues of common concerns. And uh, my proposal, yes, this think about what maritime cooperation projects China and Korea can jointly launch under the UN Ocean Decades. As we all know, uh, China have established the Chinese Committee 
of UN Ocean Decade. And many countries have all the same national committees for the implementation or cooperation on the UN Ocean Decades. So under this, the world planning, well, I think Korea and China, we can do something under this uh, world ocean decades. So my proposal also is that, always that, let's strengthen dialogue and exchanges, carry out more maritime cooperation, and uh, then we can jointly tackle the challenges from oceans and climate change. We need more cooperation, especially need more dialogue and exchange our views first. Then we can jointly to deal with the global ocean governance. The, uh, and also I would like to take this opportunity to share you an a coming event information. The 17th Shaman World Maritime Week will be held in the two weeks later, 10 to 12. November. And the event will be both live and virtual. So very welcome to attend the Xiamen World Maritime Week, if you would like. If you need any information, please contact with me. So it's my want to share all of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chang Haiwan. So 